my question is like, do we now think that Chinese motorcycles, Chinese built bikes are on a par, let's say, with what would you say was the equivalent? Japanese equivalent, maybe? or Yeah, I guess. I mean, are they? Yeah, I suppose so you've got the Japanese end of the spectrum. You've got the American, you've got the European. Um, so does it sort of play with those? But in that sort of like seven grand I see what you mean. kind of 700s 800s really it's like yeah. you're looking at the uh well they're making the ktms now the 790s yeah so really you're looking at mto7s and um uh the z650 and then also maybe like the trident but that's built in thailand yeah but to mm-hmm. to try and standards they say um so yeah. yeah kind of just thinking about those as the the direct competition for these bikes i mean actually mm. which bikes did you actually ride that would be a good start, or the ones you reviewed at least. Pretty much. So in terms of reviewing it, um, I was on the 700 and the 800, they were my focus, because for both of us, that was most of our sort of curiosity was aimed at that, because mm. I've not ridden a larger capacity Chinese no. yeah. bike. Um, or, yeah, Chinese made, Chinese designed, whatever it is. So uh, that was my sort of curiosity. The weird thing was, and I don't know if I told you this, but there was the sort of surprise of the day for me, and for a lot of the guys actually out there, was the the smaller capacity bikes, the 300 in particular. Right. So uh, in terms of what we rode, we were on the 300 SR, I believe. So it's like their, uh, it's just a a sports bike, if you like. Um, So kind of like a Yamaha um, R3, is it? Yeah, okay. That looks quite, quite tasty, that. Yeah, and it's it's pretty looking, I have to say, mm. but I really, really wasn't expecting big things from it. And when my turn came, because we were all, they brought a lot of bikes, probably too much to fit into one day, to be honest. But mm. what it did give was a really nice contrast between them. And mm. like I say, everyone kind of had their favorites going in. Uh, and I was like, yeah, fine, I'll jump on the 300. And the section of road we were on as well was fantastic. We were just going up. In fact, all of it was fantastic. I mean, <laughs> there literally wasn't a bad piece of road to be seen. Um, but that bike, because it was so small, everyone loved it. It was kind of charming because it was, uh, so small. You felt like you could wring its neck, like yeah. you could get it to a hundred percent. Whereas, cause the roads were, they were literally just hairpin after hairpin. They were yeah. super tight. One of the tightest roads I've ever been on. So when you're on an 800, uh, CC bike mm. going into that, you have to measure it. You have to kind of, you, you know, drop down, pick your, your line and your speed correctly Mm-hmm. Um, and hope that you did. Otherwise, you have to sort of readjust mid corner, and sometimes that's just it doesn't feel as consistent. It's a bit mm. frustrating when you have to compromise your line, let's say. Whereas with the three hundred, you could just bomb it into a corner, yank on the brakes. Uh, you know, it gives enough feel. It's light enough that it's not really going to get too out of out of shape. Mm. And then just throw it into a corner and pretty much just hold the throttle wide open the whole way. Yeah, up. exactly. Yeah, pin it. And you f- and it was great. It was so good for that. So that, I think, for everyone was a kind of a big surprise. And it was also sort of smoother than I was thinking. Um, and I was wondering where the jump would come when it would be noticeable that the quality had improved because obviously they've worked with other partners in the past and um, they have obviously based a lot of their designs off of previously made bikes yeah um engines specifically but so for example the 650 is based on the kawasaki kawasaki engine the kawasaki the kawasaki <laughs> kawasaki Kawa 60 engine yeah exactly yeah so it's the you know the z650 it might even Parallel be a little twin. before that's so like yeah. yeah exactly er6 um mm. that sort of setup um so the engines you're familiar with and i was expecting at some point especially when you know that um the 800 for example when you realize that that bike is closely linked uh with the 790 the yeah. ktm 790 i was expecting because this is uh, i think one of their newest bikes if not their newest bike sort of release that there would be a big step up in quality in my mm-hmm. head i was sort of that was one of the questions at least that i had Right. And I have to say, it wasn't as noticeable a transition or like a leap. It wasn't like a step up to the 800. It was just that, as you'll find, you know, with any other brand, if you go from their naked street bike to their big flagship touring bike or whatever, there is a difference. And you can tell, you know, when you jump on, say, a GS compared to an F900, there's going to be a step up, isn't it? A few more bits and pieces, yeah. Exactly, yeah. And it's just everything gets a bit more ironed out. It's a bit more cushy and plush. But do you say that as like, as in the smaller capacity bikes were impressive or the larger capacity bikes yes okay no oh yeah it's that way around so rather than it being like it means that the 800s were less impressive than i was expecting it's more that the smaller capacities were more impressive than i was expecting right um like i say specifically the the 300 
Uh, we didn't have the 4 450, which they do. Um, mm. We had next step up was the 650 uh, NK, which stands for naked. Mm. So that is similar to, you know, ER6F or Kawasaki um, Z650 or, um, well, insert bike name here, I guess. Um, similar, I guess. You could sort of compare it to, say, the Hornet. I would say the Hornet probably is more refined. Yeah, their 650 NK was uh, another surprise because, again, we. so I started on the 700. And a lot of us did because they had a few of those. Mm. Um, and then we jumped on the 650 and we were like, you know, expecting the 700 to be the one that sort of blows our socks off. Yeah. Um, and it was actually sort of you jump back and you're like, wow, that's the 650 weirdly. And we did mention this on the day was a little bit smoother, probably because it's been out for longer. I don't know. Maybe there's some teething problems with the 700, but it was a bit smoother. On the throttle or? Yeah. Then the 700. And basically they they've adjusted i say it's the same engine in the 650 and the 700s they've bored it out made it a larger capacity so it's a 180 crank in those i believe so yeah so it's got um, more of that chugging feel whereas the 800s yeah. have got the cross plane 270 yes. kind of ah, okay so the the 700 i think i'm right in saying is a larger capacity but the same you know basics in terms of the engine as the 650 but when i was on the 700 we set off and just doing the town stuff before we got to the mountain roads, um, I was just playing with the throttle to see what it had and how smooth the power delivery was and, you know, where it meets its sort of uh, peak revs and stuff like that or peak power <laughs> or nearly shot into the bike in front of me because it was like, oh, yeah, no, it's okay. It's okay. Got to 7,000 revs and it went, way hey! <laughs> And really, it got quite giddy, let's say, at 7,000 uh, 7, revs. And it redlines, I think, at like eight or nine roughly uh and then goes all the way up to sort of 10 so you've not right. got a lot past seven thousand, but it's just hits this weird sort of spike where you're like fucking hell where was that like <laughs> yeah yeah a few uh a few thousand revs before so it's um it and it wasn't that smooth a transition in my head i sort of likened it to the transition that you get from the 800 vtex for example okay. you know when they open the extra valves and you get that surge it was that kind of surge and i was it was an odd one and i was like if i got that in a corner I think it would be disconcerting. I'd rather have that, you know, on a straight. If it happens mm. when I'm not expecting it, it's going to wrong foot me. And again, I'll have to just adjust my line and it'll frustrate me. Um, I have to say, didn't notice it at all when we got onto the faster roads and it opened up. Yeah, I got you. Um, so it wasn't really a problem. It was only on the straights and it was only because I wasn't expecting it. Um, and I think it's only in terms of the mapping. And we mentioned it to them and I'm sure because it is a while before they're going to be like fully uh, released, you know, in large capacity in the UK. Um, that's the sort of thing they definitely could tweak and improve on them because it's totally just a map. that could be a, a different map yeah exactly and that'd be an easy thing to do um and it was also i should definitely point out the sport that i started on right so they have three versions that we had for the day they had the um 700 clx sport heritage and the adventure which mm -hmm. is their scrambler style yeah and on the sport that's where it was really noticeable when mm -hmm. i got on the uh scrambler it, that disappeared. They, it was obviously mapped differently because it's a scramble. Ah, it should be. okay. And it was not just you that found this. There was a few other. No, and that's the thing. So I was like, because you know, I don't know. I'm, I'm green as grass. So I was sort of, I didn't want to sort of take for, <laughs> for granted. I sort of gone and I mentioned it to a few people. I was like, just you let me know what you think of that. Like to me, it felt a bit this. And then once they sort of confirmed that they felt it as well, I was like, okay, good. I wasn't just like imagining it. Who else was out on the trip with you then? There was a few really good group as well. Um, it, yeah, that was really nice. There was a lot of camaraderie and support and stuff from uh, from the guys, and no competitiveness at all, despite the fact uh, that I was comfortably the slowest in the entire group. Oh right, and I was happy with my lot at the back because <laughs> <laughs> normally we set off and you sort of you, there's a bit of a sort of teething uh, time where you sort of work out where you sit in the sort of pecking order, or yeah, yeah, if you're holding people up or if they're holding you up, and you just resettle. Uh, and we we set off, and I was second uh, to back, and um, a guy called Dave was behind me. Um, I know Dave, and yeah, really nice guy, right? Yeah, he is. You know? Yeah, yeah. He was like, on the Hornet trip last time. Okay, with me, I think. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, motorcycle, sport, and leisure. Um, mm -hmm. Dave, yeah, and he was uh, yeah, fucking good rider as well. So he was behind me, and then obviously at a certain point, I was like, no, nah, I'm holding him up. So I waved him on, and he was he was fine from that point 
uh, onwards. And I, I didn't really see his tail again for a few corners. He was at least sort of two corners ahead of me. So yeah, <laughs> but the group was, like I say, there was zero competitiveness to it at all. It was all kind of like, you know, you could openly sort of go, oh, you know, that corner, you were really quick around that one. What's the sort of, what am I missing? What's my technique? Uh, or, you know, you were sat behind me, what do you reckon uh, based on my riding? So yeah, there was there was Dave as I mentioned. There was Andy who was there for uh, Carol Nash. I think he was uh, working yeah. on behalf of, but he he freelances. Um, and then there was uh, Dan from MCN. Yeah, and username Kate. Who I, you've met username Kate as well, right? Kate's great. Yeah, she's yeah. Um, yeah, she's someone I spoke to about perhaps coming on the podcast at some point. So we should. Do. I did think about doing it for this, but I just. I've been very disorganized lately, but I'm sure we'll get the chance. But um I think yeah, yeah, she was she was fantastic. Um yeah, proper sort of uh blunt northern kind of <laughs> I mean, it, it was, which I really, really liked. Um yeah, quite funny as well. So yeah, we need a bit of run, blunt run. northernness on the pod. So <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Um, oh great well it sounds like an amazing trip and the bikes are quite cool yeah so you've got the review of the CLX Heritage is it the one that was in the review or is it the adventure so that was the adventure yeah uh, which was my preference of the to sort of get back to them that one was definitely smoother on the throttle that was a good great fun bike and I sort of if you pitch that against what it's playing against i suppose i can't really see it having that much competition because it's not quite like say the ducati scramble the motor marini surely right the motor marini 6.5 scrambler yes same engine yeah exactly but that. that that's pretty much it yeah um so yeah that's its closest competition because if you compare it to say ducati scrambler they're not the same and in terms of uh, like the icon or the standard Ducati Scrambler compared to this one, I'd rather actually take this one off road. Also, the the Scrambler's ten grand now. Remember, like the price has gone up massively, so hugely. Um, and then if you compare it to, I'd say uh, the Benelli as well, um, yeah. but that's smaller capacity, so again, doesn't really sort of compare to it. So uh, it was good. It had good stand up proportions. It was it was comfortable to stand up on. The fact that it's a Scrambler was, I mean, it's my comfort zone. I was much more comfortable on that than I was on the sport. I mean, the sport I was fine on, but when I jumped on that, it just all felt familiar because you've got that huge leverage on the bars and stuff. You've got that bigger front wheel, so it's a bit you know slower, more predictable in a corner. Mm. Um, you've got super cushy suspension, which you can just you know squidge into on a corner. Yeah, um, yeah, like that a lot. And then obviously the power was a little bit uh, smoother. Uh, like I said, it was definitely mapped, so it was a, a little bit easier to get on with. So that was a good bike. And then obviously we jumped on the eight hundred. So my last bike back to the uh, hotel with the 800 so these are adventure style bikes right there's three in the lineup so these are adventure yeah which a bit of a, the strange thing to me was that they're not really pitched i mean none of the bikes or a lot of that market let's say are more of a tourer than a an actual off-road explorer mm -hmm. um if you compare it you know if you're thinking of like tigers and stuff like that or not so much the africa twin that that is pretty much good for off-road but obviously it's big and heavy so it's it's not as good as the smaller capacity ones. The closest in terms of like being really capable off road are the KTM's. Um, but like I say, most of them are Tenere. Uh, yeah, Tenere as well. Yeah, exactly. That is definitely pitched for off road, isn't it? So they've got their kind of specialty. This is definitely more on the road bias. Mm. Um, I don't even know if it had an off road mode. It had two riding modes, I think. So you had, um, I think it's called Street and Rain, but basically, you know, like full power and then moderated power. dialed back a bit. Yeah, definitely more focused at road. Uh, similar in terms of sharing some DNA with the 790, which I've not tried the Adventure, but I've tried the 790 Duke. So, you know, I know the engine well. Um, and it sits really well on this bike. It's got some great little additions and some kind of odd ones, actually, because the, the 700s had like cruise control on them and stuff. And I'm like, other bikes in its bracket don't generally have that. And it's odd where they've kind of put the star parts, if you like, like the the, the fancier parts. Mm. Uh, like on the sport, they've, they've thrown like Brembo stylemas on it. What? Yeah, no. And I'm like, wow. I, <laughs> that's not normally what, what other brands do, on? but they've given it like some proper trick brakes. What about the suspension? Let me have a look. That looks kind of crazy. Stylemas. My take on that perhaps is like, they know probably that Chinese bikes are going to be a little bit a disadvantage to start just because of the reputation. Yeah. So stuff like the Moto Marini, which I've ridden, you've got the Italian brand, which is great that the mm -hmm. CF Moto yeah. doesn't have, but ultimately people are going to know it's Chinese built. And so yeah. the standard features in terms of tech, like the 
TFT dash is great. Mm. Uh, I think you do get cruise control on that and you get like um, connectivity and stuff. And I think also the finish on that bike with little mm. like Marini logos everywhere. Like they've really gone to town in terms of making it yeah, look yeah. a cut above the price point. And I just wonder if that is um, a response to like, or, or, or a way of counteracting it is like, well, you can get yeah. quite a lot more spec for your money if you don't feel yes. like you're getting the, the build. And also if you're not hundred uh, percent sure, yeah, if you go into it and you, you don't know whether to trust a brand, if they mm. throw in names that you definitely do trust, you know, if they slap some Brembo's on there, you know, they're good breaks. There's no two ways about it. It's not like they've got fake Brembo's. They are Brembo's. How do you know? Maybe they got them off Ali. <laughs> yeah. Alibaba. Um, yeah. So they've, uh, but like I say, like you say, right, it gives you uh, reassurance and confidence. And the other thing to do that, obviously, is uh, I believe. So part of the reason for this trip was that they're explaining KTM and managing their distribution elsewhere in the world. Yeah. So they've had a partnership for about 10 years and they have been distributing KTMs. Uh, so CF Moto have been helping KTM distribute in China mm. and vice versa. Now KTM is helping them. So they're setting up a, you know, a dealer um, connections and stuff like that and uh, system for it. And because of that, you know, you've got a bit more confidence in the brand then, don't you? If you don't know them or if you've never heard of them before, they've got a four year warranty, all that sort of stuff. You're like, yeah, it's starting to look pretty appealing. I have to say, um, and especially if you look at the 800 and that was the last bike I went on. So we were coming back down the mountain. It was, yeah, it was a really comfortable place to be. And there were some very, very tight hairpin corners going downhill, which normally aren't my strong suit. Those mm-hmm. are the sort of corners that I would be, you know, going in quite reserved on. Um, but I had a lot of confidence in that bike, I have to say. And it has lean sensitive ABS and stuff, uh, mm. which again, I know from KTM works really well. Uh, you can put a lot of faith into that system. And I did. Uh, luckily, well, I mean, luckily for me, because it, it was uh, nothing sort of wrong-footed me or unnerved me going into kind of unknown corners. You know, you don't know how tight they are, if they tighten up on you and you've picked your speed wrong and you might have to uh, adjust brakes mid-corner. Um, so having that there is a huge reassurance. And yeah, it was it was good fun. And that was it was the best bike of the day, but it wasn't, like I say, a huge, uh, dramatic step up. Yeah. Uh, and it didn't shit on the other bikes of the day. Um, yeah, yeah, exactly. Basically, yeah. So it sounds like the, the, that was probably a 20-minute way of answering the question whether Chinese bikes are on a par with their peers now. Sounds like they're getting close. I would say so, yeah. I would say I was going there wanting to know whether it did uh, or whether they stood up. And yes, I was pleasantly surprised. I think the only thing is like long-term owners reviews and stuff like that um but presumably this ktm partnership is only gonna have a positive effect on on cf moto Uh, they said they've got their ktm bods out there like making sure that the build process is this is the same approach triumph took you know um getting their kind of um processes in place to make sure the quality control is as good so uh yeah but it'll still be interesting to see when people buy them what are the owners reviews like what are the forum posts like the stuff that you know YouTubers and people like myself uh, can't really answer because it just the economics of it don't really work. You can't put 10,000 miles on a bike. But um, yeah, I, that, that's the only thing I'd be keeping my eye out for. But hopefully we'll get a few. I've got the um, 790 Duke and 790 Adventure coming next month for for review. So that'll be interesting yeah. as well to see how the, how those feel. Uh, maybe see if you can get a spin on one as well. Well, um, have yeah. to try and hook that good. up. Yeah. While it's still fresh in my mind, it'd be nice to uh, yeah to compare the two. Definitely.